रामाय राम भद्राय राम चंद्राय वेद से रघुनाथाय नाथाय सीताय प्रत्ये नम अरण्यकांड चैप्टर नंबर सिक्स द ऋषि टेक रेफ्यूज विद राम रिसाइटल बिगिन नाउ Then the sages that lived thereabout said to themselves, "The self-resplendent supreme Lord has come down to take birth among the Ichivakus, and has even sought us in our wild homes, thanks to the merit laid up in our past lives. Now can we declare the truth that our tapas, charity, and other righteous acts have borne good fruit? Let us seek His presence and desire no more." like a miserable beggar all his life who stumbles upon the nine treasures they could not contain their joy and flock to him from all quarters vaikunasas that were born from the nails of the lord valakilyas that sprang from his tail samprakshalas that ever cleanse their bodies with water marichipas that drink of the rays of the sun and the moon asmakutas who strike their bodies with hard slaps hermits that live upon leaves and recluses that eat of grains of corn which their teeth help them to hold hasten along with others who ever stand up to their necks in water Others too were there who ever sleep with their heads resting on their breasts or shoulders who deny them so sleep and stand erect and rigid day and night some lie exposed to wind and rain heat and cold some live upon water others upon air some perch themselves on top of trees others take their seats on kusha grass spread on the ground some observe a perpetual fast engaging themselves with vows and penances some are clad in ever dripping garments some are ever reciting mantras others are ever repeating vedic texts some perform sivya tapas surrounding themselves in summer with five fires they shown with brahmic luster engendered of the practice of the sacred science of brahman they had trod the various steps of the eightfold paths of yoga and had mastered the secret of concentrating their powers to rama the king who was an adept in the mysteries of dharma and stood foremost amongst those that practice them they knew well that they had no other refuge from the terrible persecutions of the rakshasas and that shri ramachandra who incarnated to protect the world was their sole shelter and support of all beings and they poured forth their griefs and sorrows to him in well chosen words to rouse his compassion Rama best of heroes Indra is the lord and protector of the devas are you not the best of the ikshvakus the noblest ornament of the line of raghu are you not the legitimate lord of this earth nay are you not the sole support and nourisher of all creation you have secured unparalleled fame as a hero through all the worlds as a destroyer of viradha and the giver of immortal life to sharabhanga the ruler of infinite worlds yet you have chosen to be born as a kshatriya and live the dharma of one in you reside the noble qualities of filial devotion in that you renounce the crown that your father gave you of his own accord truth in that you held your promise and would not listen to the piteous appeals of bharata and companionship of the good and holy in that you raised sharbhanga to the immortal worlds you are the soul of virtue you do best the dharma of protecting those that take refuge in you you practice it to the full all beings are drawn to you by an irresistible charm we are here to beg of you a favor and submit it as best as we could forgive us this indiscretion our purpose would be served best by simply taking refuge in your mercy the wise have it that it is enough if the suppliants betake themselves to the presence of great ones well do we know the rule that your children need not pray anything of you but you rest content in the assurance of your omniscience compassion and omnipotence you have come down to save the world and we are well aware of it but our miseries go is on to voice it forth like men of the world and we pray you forgive us this lapse it comes to you as a natural duty to secure peace and happiness to the inhabitants of your kingdom a load of sin rests on his shoulders who 
protects from his subjects one sixth of their belongings, but protects them not as the very children of his loins. Boundless fame to the end of time crowns him who seeks the welfare of his people with unflagging care and zeal, as he would of his life and of his children, dearer to him than his own life. The world of Brahma and a warm welcome from its Lord await him after death. But we hermits and recluses pay you no tribute. Then it serves no purpose to exert yourself on our behalf. Nay, not so. For the righteous king secures to himself a fourth of the supreme merit laid up by the hermit through his strict diet and stricter tapas. You stand unique among the rulers of the world and work for the welfare of your subjects with utter unselfishness. To take refuge in you is the best passport to your heart. The hermits hereabouts are mostly brahmanas and you are their legitimate king and protector. Yet they are destroyed by the rakshasas like helpless waves. Does it become you this carelessness to safeguard the life and happiness of your devotees? Glance and eye of pity at the wasted forms of the rishis that are absorbed in the eternal contemplation of you. Behold the cruel wounds dealt them by the weapons of the Rakshasas. Behold the pile of skeletons of good and holy men whom the monsters have mutilated, hacked, burnt and crunched. The miseries of the rishis that dwell on the banks of the Pampa and the Mandakini and about Chitrakuta defy description. You cannot ask us to go on with our tapas, bestowing no thought upon our bodies, for our prayer has no reference to the dangers that befall our vehicles of flesh, rather than utter injustice of our being a silent witness to the heinous offenses and persecutions of the Rakshasas towards the great holy ones. We take refuge in you in that you are endowed with the might to protect all the worlds. Save us, whose only consolation during our sufferings at the time of the Rakshasas was that you would, at no distant time, come down on earth. Countless worlds hold for us no other shelter, no other refuge but your noble selves. Here and hereafter, we know no other good. And to them replied Rama, Nay, it becomes you not to speak so. Your seeking my protection is more than a command unto me. It is all unnecessary for you to ask me to save you. It is unmeet of you. I came to this forest of Dandaka but to free you from the persecution of the Rakshasas. The commands of my father there too is but an accident. So this exile is to me a glorious blessing in disguise. I have decided to lay low in battle your cruel foes. You will have a chance to see what my valor and the prowess of Lakshmana can effect. Thus did he promise them protection and refuge, Rama, whose life they strove to follow. Then he proceeded to the ashrama of Sutikshna with his brother and wife. His heart ever centered on the highest dharma, and the holy ones kept him company. Mangalam Koshlendraya Mahaniya Kunavdi Chakravarti Dharnurjaya Sarva Bhomaya Mangalam